So what they've actually done, what happened was the uh, the motorcycle exploded last night, and uh, <laughs> they were fortunate enough to put it all back on the on the bench for me. Guys, so we're down in the uh, the belly of the beast, <laughs> down at Harley Heaven. Uh, we've got this bike build happening. The Theo's just brought brought us down here, and uh, so we've got a, so we've got a bit happening, haven't we, Theo? We do, we do. Uh, yeah, the workshops are quite busy at the moment. Yep. But, uh, the most important bike is your bike in here now, Paul. <laughs> that's, that's so we're getting Pat's getting stuck into it. So as you can see, the bike it's uh, getting stripped down. We're going to do the cams, the upgraded oil pump, obviously the bars, the suspension, a few other bits and pieces that you've picked out also. So. Awesome. So we've got Pat. So Pat, everything, everything's going well at the moment? Yeah, everything's fine. And the, the cam we've got going in is the 475? Yeah, yeah. SNS 475 cam. Yeah, yep. it's a really good all-round cam. We put it in a lot of the bikes, yep. uh, soft tails and tourers. Yep. Um, it's just got, it sounds good. It's got good bottom end, good top end, it just does everything well and it suits all these kind of bikes. So, breakouts, fat boys, tourers, just yep. suits them really well. Really good. All right, we'll, we'll keep filming and we'll keep, uh, we'll let Pat get into it and um, and we'll see how the progression goes. No worries. As you can see at the moment, it's absolutely in pieces. Can we talk about that again? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Paul. <laughs> uh, we were just talking just about... The little important things when you do a cam. Yep. So you've got a, a new cam bearing, which yep. is an upgraded Screaming Eagle bearing or an SNS bearing. Yep. And that just needs to be pushed into the right depth. Right, yep. And then also when you put your cam plate back on, you make sure your um, sprockets are in line with each other, just like on a on a push bike or something, I guess. You don't want the chain running at an angle. Yep. So we measure that and shim up those sprockets to make sure the chain runs straight. And um, in this job, we're going to put adjustable push rods, so yep. we don't need to take the heads and stuff off. Yep. So when we put our adjustable push rods back in, we just make sure the engine's in the right spot, so that the push rods are on the, the base of the cams, and then we adjust our push rods to the correct length, and um, everything is all um, lined up and timed when we go to start her up. And I think with these, I was talking to Theo as well. I think with these, um, with these um, M8s, yep. uh, this particular model, you, we, we've got to change the oil pump too. Is that correct? Oh, you don't have to. You can. Yep. Is, we all get an upgraded oil pump. It's over yep. there on the bench. Yep. It's just got higher capacity. Um, yeah, so it flows more oil in the same space of time as yep. the stock one, which is good for cooling, lubrication, and so on. Um, but they'll most the bikes. Um, we'll run fine with the standard oil pump. We put stage four kits in bikes with standard oil pumps, and they're fine. So okay. It depends on what applications. Yep. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think because I, I was talking to another uh, somebody else, and I was saying because you, you know you're doing a lot of miles and lots of stuff, it's probably wise to, to do the upgrade on it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got a, a heavier bike like a Tour, yep. And uh, you're going to do a lot of k's or put a lot of horsepower through it, or more oil always helps. So you know, bit better oil, screaming eagle oil, bigger oil pump. So on and so on. So, what's your recommendation for the best oil? Because that's oh, a look, it comes up all the time. Yeah, look, I'm not mad about it. I, I reckon we run big stage four bikes on HD 360. It's fine. Never yep. seen a problem with it. Yep. Um, you know, the, the they say the screaming eagle oil is a little bit thinner when it's cold. It can be a bit rattly or something, but it's ne never seen anything that would make me say, "Oh, one's better than the other," and you know, different applications. Yep different kinds of oil you can you can upgrade everything you know yeah, yeah. you can uh, upgrade nearly every component of the bike it's just and what what do you what, what is, what's your opinion on the the like the twin cam compared to these new m8s uh yeah that's a good question actually because the m8 is like it's a lot more rounded so when you go for a ride you're never lacking anything yep you know even if you've got a big one with big cams they still run smooth they still take off really hard and they got heaps of top end because of the four valves. Yep. And they kind of, uh, they're really practical. They get the job done. You got heaps of horsepower, heaps of torque, smooth, yep. quiet. Yep. But then you get on a big twin, sorry, a twin cam. Yep. 
and uh, you just get that little bit of nostalgia again, you know? It's yeah, a bit yeah. lumpier and it's a bit gruntier and yep. a bit more old school. And These are more refined, I guess, is what you say. Oh, they're way more refined. Yeah. You get the same look and sort of outside feel, but yep. when you ride them, you notice the difference. Yeah. There's a lot of power and a big spread of power, nice yeah. smooth curve. So, so this is our old oil pump. Yep. Stock one, you can see this is one of the um, old style ones without the seal on the back. Yep. The new one's got a seal to help scavenge the oil out of the crankcase. Yep. And um, this is the old cam plate here, the stock one, which does the same job, but this one will flow more oil and it's stronger because it's billet aluminium, it'll, it'll just be a stronger component inside the engine, inside the valve train there. Awesome. So yeah, we're gonna bolt this down um, make sure the oil pump spins freely and then we're going to do our cam and crank sprocket alignment and um, go from there. Awesome. So we have to, you still have to, does it get dynoed as well or? Um, this one won't need to because yep. there's some really good um, people we do our tuning with, um, Techno Research. Yes. They've got good tunes written for these bikes. Okay, yep. And um, yeah, we found that they come out, you tune them. Um, test ride them, make sure it's all feeling good, and then we haven't had problems with them really. Okay, it's been really good. Is, is that because because of the M8? Is it, there's a difference with it, or? Uh, no, it's just someone the the techno research guys that sell our little tuning keys. Yes, they do a lot of they up in Queensland. They do a lot of time on the dyno, and they do a, a lot of the common combinations, if not all of them. Yep. And even if we do a combination that's a bit different, we can often ring them and they'll they'll recommend the closest one, and then we might do a little bit of dyno tuning or road tuning. Yep depending on what it needs. And okay. then it's usually bikes that have got a combination that we haven't really seen before that we do on the dyno to make sure they're all good. Okay. So what I like to do now is put the cam plate in and the cam, the cam's still loose because it gets pulled up yep. when we shim it. But before I tighten this cam plate down completely, I like to make sure that the oil pump is bolted to the back of the cam plate, nice and even on the crank. Mm -hmm. So the way you do that is you just roll the motor over a little bit. Yep. And it kind of settles the pump in the right spot before yep. I tighten it down. So I'll give it a couple of rotations. You can hear the pump yep. itself pumping there. And then I just nip these down, just so that that pump housing, if you imagine that uh, maybe, like usually it's fine, but if I didn't do that, the, the pump might be sitting concentric to the housing and then when I start it up any tiny amount of um, throw out on this crank, thou to thou, is just going to put pressure on one part of the pump and over a certain amount of kilometres um, it'll just start to really put pressure on that pump and pump housing whereas this gives it the best chance to be nice and central with a nice amount of clearance on each side. See, this, this stuff for me, I, I don't know about you, Waddy, this, this is gold, like this information. Like, like you, you know, there's this guys the out there. That if we don't do it, comes back. That's we get it. Trouble, so. Exactly right. So, this is the stuff, yeah, people say, oh, you know, you just do it yourself, it's not that hard. But this is the things I'm talking about. Like, I would never know that. You would never no. know that. No, um, and that's what I mean. Like, that, that's why I leave this stuff to. And look, more power to you if you know what you're doing and you want to do it yourself go for it but this is why I uh, I leave this stuff to the professionals and then if there's an issue they know they know exactly what's happened so I just talk this up in stages just gently to make sure it stays central for me rotate it a couple more times so I've got I've got the bike jacked up and I've got it in six gear the spark plugs are out on the other side so I can turn it over and at the moment I'm, I'm not fighting the valve train so it turns over quite easily. And now I torque the whole plate up, including the pump, to the final torque. And then I'm ready to do my sprockets and check my, make sure my sprocket alignment's all good. Awesome. So I just thought I'd introduce, we've got Whitey down here from, um, from that Harley couple. And he was just complaining about how much Lisa is giving my hard time <laughs> at the moment. I just thought I'd put that in the <laughs> box. <laughs> so like this is the kind of thing that this stuff is all really well engineered it'll go together you could just whack it together but these little tricks about lining up your pump making sure your sprockets are aligned they'll they'll save your motor over you know 50 60 100 thousand kilometers yep so that's the reason we sort of a bit fussy about it 
because we want to see these motors live for a really long time and come back for their services and stuff, you know? Yep. So we're just putting the uh, the cam chain tensioner. Now, some of the older ones, did they have a problem with the cam chain tensioners? I think they were... Um, well, high mileage bikes will wear through them. Yep. And they'll, they'll have this sort of sluffy rattly noise. So that's what's something to listen to if you're getting a bit of noise in your in your yeah, older bike? Yeah, one of the things that will, will be apparent. Um, like a worn cam chain tensioner with a, will, will have a noisy chain. Yep. A lifter that's failed will be really noisy. It'll be a really obvious tapping noise. Yep. But there's all kinds of noises. It's a bit easier to track down when they're sort of in front of you. So we've got the new oil pump done up, centered. We got the new cam with um, engine manufact um, engine building lube on it so it doesn't drip off by the time I'm ready to start it up. Yep. Uh, aligned the sprockets for the chain, new cam chain tensioner, everything torqued down properly. So our lifters are not going anywhere anymore. We can remove our magnets. Oh, and so they're actually magnets you put on there to keep Yeah, they stop the lifters from falling into, oh, okay, the, yep, yep. into the cam chest when there's nothing in there. Okay. And then uh, now the next thing we're going to do is I need to just time this up so that the back two are, are both closed. They're on the heel of the cam. Yep. And then I'm going to install my adjustable push rods on the rear cylinder, rotate it over, and adjust them on the front, uh, let them all bleed down. And then uh, engine-wise, that's it. Just need to reinstall the exhaust, the air cleaner, mm -hmm. tune it to suit. Yep. And. Um, Make and sure there's done. enough oil in it. We've lost a little bit of oil, not much. And then we're right to start it up. Rightio, so we're at the stage now where the cam is pretty much put in, ready to go. We're just doing the last little bits and pieces here. I'm about to get out of uh, Pat's hair and let him finish off the job. Um, but uh, you're happy how it's gone so far? Yeah, no worries. It all fits nicely. The Screaming Eagle parts, the SNS parts are really good. So it's no problems at all. So now what, what you'll do now just to finish this bit off, you'll just put the, the, the lifters and that in? Yeah, the lifters are already in there. Yep. The, these adjustable push rods, I'll adjust them up to the correct length. Yep. Um, so they come out the exact same length as the stockies. Yep. And then um, rotate it around onto the front, do the same at the front, then I can close everything up. And on your build, we're just gonna refit the headers. Yep. You got new mufflers, Rhino mufflers. Yeah, Rhino, yep. And then um, your air cleaner's going back on. Like I said, I'll tune it on the computer. I'll put in a, a base mat. Yep. That's, that's usually pretty much spot on for these. Um, do your handlebars. Yep. Uh, run it all up, take it for a test ride, make sure everything's good, give it a wash, and it'll be all yours. Ready to go. All right, well, it's been fantastic. Just like to thank Pat for, uh, for uh, bearing with us this morning. It's been really, really good. Um, like I said, we'll come back, we'll do some more filming, uh, uh, you know, it's just about ready to go, and then we'll do the big unveiling, and uh, you'll see what this beast is going to look like when it's finished. Thanks again, mate, really appreciate no it. No worries. Alright, mate, so that's been a good day, it's been, I appreciate you. No, no, it was a good day. We're getting through it, hopefully within the next couple of days. Yep, we'll have it done. We'll have it done, and you'll be out riding. We'll do the big unveiling. I mean, keep bringing me every day, where's my bike, where's my bike? <laughs> It's coming. It's it's definitely coming. It's in the making. So. I, I don't break his balls that much, do I? Really? No, no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And like I said, it's always a pleasure dealing with you, Paul, and you know that. All right, guys. Well, that was another good episode. Um, like I said, we'll come back with some more stuff. We're going to do some more filming on the bike. We'll do the big unveiling. And uh, again, thanks to Theo for allowing us to film down here. And um, thanks to Whitey for coming down and helping out with the filming as well. Pleasure. Catch you next time, guys. See, See you, guys. Then. See ya. See ya.